Hello, it is Tuesday, June 9th, and i um, got my dog with me sitting back here chewing on her favorite. Oh, she, I thought she was chewing on a rawhide. She's actually kind of like licking her favorite toy. So that's what she's doing. Um, today, we had the funeral for George Floyd, and um, I heard excerpts from the um, funeral. It sounded like it was just a wonderful service. Uh, and at the same time, I was thinking it took this man's gruesome death for finally America to start waking up. Not all of America, because some of America was already woke to the police brutality uh, towards minorities. and But it took this man's horrible death. It's almost like he was sacrificed for justice. This should never be a sacrifice for justice. It's sad that this happened. But the one positive has been that a lot of people who never gave a second thought to police brutality towards minorities have been awakened to it. And um, that it happened in the midst of this historic moment with the COVID-19 Virus. It just is interesting, like these two things happening si happening simultaneously, both major historic events, um, in a weird way, one fueling the other, and vice versa. Because um, COVID nineteen exposed the the inequity in this country, and then the tensions were so high, and then this one event just exploded into the forefront. Unfortunately, this administration has been so completely tone deaf to what's been going on, both neglecting the virus for so long and then adding fuel to the fire to all the protests. And, you know, the president, even today, I had talked about in the video, a prior video about that elderly man, 75-year-old man who was pushed down by the police. And then the police officers resigned from their positions as the riot, you know, doing the kind of work they were doing back to with their regular job, all 57 of them, and protest of the two people that were suspended without pay for basically committing a crime. The two officers that committed a crime, 57 of them, resigned from their positions in protest. And then our president now is spreading a conspiracy theater that this theory that the 75 year old man was part of Antifa and that he was uh, trying to scam. I don't know. It's the most ridiculous, senseless thing, but he's trying to put a spin to the whole event, not acknowledging the police brutality. It, it just is bizarre. You know, he is mentally not right. It's become very obvious. Um, he spends his time twittering instead of governing. And then the few things that he proposes are all such hateful legislation that it goes against one group or another, you know? And then his speeches are so hate-filled. And um, he's just a, a disgusting human being. He absolutely is a disgusting human being. And the thing is that a lot of people are just, I guess when you've locked yourself in a White House, now extra barricades around. He's so isolated from reality that he lives in this fantasy world in his brain and he's trying to legislate or do his job in this fantasy world of his that he has no concept of consequences of what is really going on on the street right outside those fences. He's even more isolated now, so he's now just spinning these bizarre things that a person... You're not mentally right. And, you know, I'm starting to see comments that people are saying he is just not mentally right. This is beyond ego and he's becoming delusional. So his state of mind was questionable before, but now I always felt like he knew what he was doing. He was doing a lot of stuff to provoke people on purpose, which is hateful and awful for president to do. Uh, but that was his style. But now it's gotten so bizarre that I really don't think he's lost. He's losing touch with reality. He really is. And he looks awful. Something's happened to him because 
he just doesn't look right. Um, you know, you can just tell when you see people that something's wrong with them, and he if he, he just is looking wrong, like something's wrong with him. Uh, like, sometimes he looks like he's not all there, and then he's just looking much older, and as I said, they keep adding makeup to him, which just exacerbates it all. Sad, sad, sad. COVID numbers. We broke another, well, we tied the record for the most cases today. Again, the last record was just this last Friday. Uh, there's still room at the hospital beds, but they're starting to, you know, the beds are starting to fill up. We're not at capacity yet, but I don't, to me, it's awfully close to capacity. We're like at 33% still occupancy. But that can change that fast because if we remember how the virus spread it in New York, it was like within a few days it just exploded and overwhelmed everything. And we're getting to the numbers that if all of a sudden we have a bit of a, a bigger bump, we don't have the room. Um, you know, yes, there's 33% capacity for more patients, but that's not, I forget how many beds, but it's not that, that many that could quickly fill up. And our numbers in Texas have gone, as, not just in Dallas, but in Texas are still near record highs every day of new cases. Yes, more people are getting tested, but more people are coming down with it too. And more people are starting to die. The death numbers are starting to increase too. So I'm concerned, but I feel like helpless in this, which I helpless in the sense that I can't control what's happening outside my door. I can only control what I do. But it's, you don't feel like you're, it feels like you're on your own. So that's all my news for today, except for Trinity here, who finally has calmed down. Uh, what's interesting is that this dog suffered from a lot of anxiety when I first got her. Every time I went to work, she, I, she acted like I was never coming home and she would be very destructive in the condo. And then slowly she started learning that I do come back home. So, you know, she misbehaved a little bit, but not like at first where she was just tearing things up. Um, so she got accustomed to it. And of course, COVID-19 happened. And then I was at home a lot. And all of a sudden, just now over the last few days, you know, I'm working more again. Not quite to the level I was before, but that takes me out of the house more. And I'm having to re, not really retrain her, but uh, comfort her more because she's, kind of gone back to her destructive ways because I'm not here as much. She's that fearful dog of like, oh, he's leaving me alone. <sighs> so I came home today and she, you know, I try to get the trash out and not have any trash in the house because she loves to dig through the trash. But she managed to find something from somewhere. I don't know where she found it and tear it up. It wasn't valuable. Something I needed to actually get rid of. <laughs> but she shredded it to pieces like, no dog, I vacuumed this floor and the floor is clean and you just drink shredded it into 20 million pieces and it's like mm, no so i had to clean that up just did that but anyway still love her though she's good company and is hope she's i'll have to retrain her that you know i'm gonna be leaving and but daddy does come back eventually please like subscribe ring the notification bell if you see more than two of these videos please subscribe because that, that way you'll be up to date with what I do. Um, for those of you that are new, my name is Mark Soda. Um, I am an actor, writer, playwright, and uh, director. I have my own little theater company, which has been shut down through all of this. Uh, but I freelance also as an interpreter, so I have a lot of adventures as an interpreter. So that's kind of like the day job. And then nighttime I have a theater, but of course there's no theater at this point. So if you watch this video tonight, have a good night. If you watch it tomorrow... May you have a wonderful morning or afternoon, depending on the time you watch it. And I'll sign off. Ah!